my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You may be seated. I'd like to engage you in a conversation for the waning moments of this service. Uh, in a conversation from this subject, confidence for the next step. Confidence for the next step. You can face anything when God is your everything. In, 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 fact, in fact, why don't you just say that with me? You can face anything when God is your everything. Any mountain, any valley, any river, any height, any depth, any distance, you can face anything when God is your everything. Uh, any trial, any trouble, any tribulation, any tragedy, any trip, you can face anything when God is your everything. Any hurt, any harm, any hurdle, any hardship or heartbreak, you can face anything when God is your everything. Any distressing day, any demanding season, any difficult test, any dangerous road, beloved, you can face anything when God is your everything. And, and, and really, family, that's the theme and thesis of Psalm 27. That's the theme and thesis of Psalm 27. If, if this psalm is not one of your favorite psalms, or at least in your top 10, then I challenge you to upload this psalm to your mind and let God download it to your spirit. And it just might become one of your favorite psalms also. Now, the funny thing about our favorite songs is that most of our favorite songs have one or two classic lines in them, one or two memorable uh, lines that have become so uh, inerasably in 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 etched into our minds. Some of our favorite songs, they contain one or two lines that are so memorable, so quotable, that they are etched into our mind, and we remember them throughout every season of our lives. For instance, if I was to say, stop, somebody might say, hammer time. <laughs> right? If I was to say, um, for my 90s babies, one day you're here, baby. Somebody might say, and then you're gone. Right? No? If I was to say, Billie Jean is not my love, somebody might say, I have... <laughs> But the kid is not my son, right? Oh, <laughs> you, right? Because why? Because, because our favorite psalms have lines that are so memorable, so quotable, that they become etched into our minds. Am I right about it? And so it is for our favorite psalms as well. They have one or two lines in them that are so classic, so memorable. They have become so unerasably etched into our minds. And that's how it is for Psalm 27. For Psalm 27, it's, it's so classic, right? It's, it's so quotable, so tweetable, so powerful is this psalm until most of us can quote this psalm by memory, especially the first verse. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And so then, family, when I was preparing this message, I couldn't even get beyond the first clause of the first line of the first verse. When, when, when I was preparing for this sermon, I, I wanted to, 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 to give you the whole sum and tell you what the whole sum meant, but I could not get past the first clause of the, of the first line of the first verse, which says, the Lord is my light. Somebody say that, the Lord is my light. 
And so then that's what I want to leave with someone today, that the Lord is my light. I want to leave with someone today that you can have confidence for the next step of your life because the Lord will be your light in darkness. That's all I got to preach to you today is that you can have confidence for the next step of your life because the Lord will be your light in darkness. Somebody just say that with me. The Lord will be your light in darkness. David, David, David says the Lord is my light. Light, light then has a very rich meaning throughout the Old and New Testament. Light was the first aspect of creation that God spoke into existence in Genesis 1 and 3. God is called light in 1 John 1 and 5. Jesus is called light in John 8 and 12. And the Christian is called light in Matthew 5 and 14. Furthermore, family, we are urged, watch this, to walk in the light as God is the light in 1 John 1 and 7. And so then, when we take all of these scriptures and put them together, what we come to understand is the Lord will be our light in darkness. That's what we come to understand, that the Lord will be our light in darkness. But I would imagine someone here this morning is saying, but how will the Lord be my light in darkness? What does it mean that the Lord will be my light in darkness? How does that apply to my life? How can I have confidence, preacher, for the next step of my life's journey by knowing that the Lord will be my light in darkness? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because I want you to write this down. Write this down. If the Lord is your light in darkness, this means that he will shine his light, here it is, in us. If the Lord is our light in darkness, this means he will shine his light in us. When God is your light, he will shine his light in you. This is important, family, because we are not yet what we should be. God, God will be your light in darkness. He will shine his light in you because we are not yet all that we should be. We actually need God to shine his light in us. This light shines in every dark part within us to reveal the good and the bad, to reveal the pure and the impure, the righteous intent and the ulterior motive. When God is your light, he will shine his light in you. This light chases away the dark spots in your character. This light reveals to you the flaws in your attitude. This light makes known to you that which looks clean to others but is actually filthy in the eyesight of God. This light within you causes you to look at you. This light causes you to examine you. This light causes you to work on you and to pray about what's going on in you. David said it like this in Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Is there anybody here this morning that needs God's light to shine in you? I need, I need, I need, I need to tell someone here this morning that your talent is not enough. Your intelligence is not enough. Your ability and skill alone is not enough. You need character and integrity and loyalty and, and righteousness. Therefore, we need God's light to shine in us. I need to tell someone many doors have been opened by talent that have been closed by a flawed character. Many positions have been won by ability alone, only to be lost by a bad attitude. Many dreams have been actualized only to be turned into nightmares because of pride, arrogance, and selfishness. God needs to shine his light 
in us. Someone just, just parenthetically just say, God, shine your light in me. That I won't get something that I can't keep. Shine your light in me that when you, when you take me to the position, I can handle the responsibility. Huh? Lord, take me. Lord, take your light and, and shine it in me that, that I can become better as a man. I can become better as a woman. That I can become the person that you would have me to be. Lord, shine your light in me. You can, you, you, you can have confidence. You can have confidence for the next step of your life's journey, family, because not only the Lord being your light in darkness means that he will shine his light, watch this, in you, but it also means that he will shine his light around you. <laughs> Am I right about it? He'll shine his light around you. When God is your light, he shines his light around you. When the road ahead is darkened by uncertainty, we need God to shine his light around us. When the way forward is unclear, we need God to shine his light around us. When standing, family, at the fork in the road, we need God to shine his light around us. When indecision plagues us and skepticism hunts us and uneasiness nags you, God will shine his light around you. Sometimes, 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 listen to me graduates, sometimes the decisions that we are faced with, they're not between good and bad. They're not between healthy and unhealthy. They're not between positive and negative, true and false, vicious or virtuous, but sometimes the decisions that we are faced with are between good and better. Sometimes the decisions are between better and best. Sometimes they are between best and most excellent. And when faced with these decisions, ask God to shine his light around you. Did you hear me when I said? Ask God to shine his light around you. You remember the children of Israel, don't you? The Bible says that at nighttime, God became a pillar of fire. And what that pillar of fire was to make every dark place clear and plain. Life is filled with so many decisions. Life is filled with so many choices. And you need to stop and ask God, Lord, shine your light around me so that every step will be plain. You ever been walking in your house at nighttime? It's your house, you've been living up for 50, 11 years. But when the light's off, you trip in your own house. Because the, the kids done left the shoes out of There's a random skateboard right in the middle of the path, right? Why? Because the lights are off. But when you turn the lights on, every step you can take with certainty. And that's what you need to ask God to do in your life. Lord, shine your light around me so that every step will become clear. Watch this, family. The songwriter said it this way, order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Do what? Order my steps in your word. Is there anybody here this morning that needs God to order your steps in his word? When God is your light, you can have confidence for the next step of life's journey because if you ask him, he'll shine his light in you. But then he'll shine his light around you. But here's the last thing. God will shine his light through you. Did you hear me when I said God will shine his light through you. When, when, when God is your light, he'll shine his light through you. And when God shines, listen to me, because this is going to bless you. When God shines his light through you, some folk will be drawn to you. And other folk will be driven away from you. 
This, 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 this is the hard reality of life. This is, this is the hard reality of life, that when God shines his light through us, some folk will be drawn to us, but other folk, and sometimes it's the folk that we want to be drawn to us, are driven away from us. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? But oftentimes, God uses the light to keep folk away that needs to be away. Amen. And bring folk to us that he needs to be drawn to us. When God is your light, some folk will be drawn to you and other folks will be driven away. But that's all right, family. Let your light shine. When God shines his light through you, those walking in darkness will see God's light in you and be drawn to God. Watch what, Bi what the Bible says. Matthew 5 and 16 says this, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so then I'll leave you with this, family. Your prayer should be, Lord, shine your light through me. Shine your light through me in the way that I treat my sisters and brothers. Shine your light through me. When it comes time for me to forgive those who at times it may be hard to forgive. Shine your light through me. When it comes to dealing with people who sometimes are disagreeable, Shine your light through me. When it comes to loving those who sometimes hmm, make it hard for you to love them. Shine your light through me. When I'm working on a job and the folk on my job makes it hard for me to clock in. Ask God to shine his light through you. But, because can I tell you, can I tell you, can I tell your family that the light is not seen in lit places? Because you know how some of us do. Some of us come to church trying to let our little light shine. You don't let your little light shine in church, family. <laughs> because all of us got light up in here. We can't even see your little light. Amen. You got your little flashlight, your little flashlight trying to flicker your little flashlight in church. Everybody got light in church. But you want to let your light shine on the college campus. You want to let your light shine in your home. You want to let your light shine in the community. Somebody say, shine, light, shine. It is in dark places that we will let our light shine. There was, there was, there was, watch this because this is going to bless you. There was a neighborhood and in this neighborhood, the houses were built up high. Listen to me. In this neighborhood, the houses were built up high so that when the sun came out, it came out and it shined in such a way that one side of the neighborhood was well lit, but because the houses were built so, so high, the other side of the neighborhood was in darkness. One side of the neighborhood, because the houses were built so high, one side was well lit when the sun came out, and the other side was in darkness. There was a man. He moved into this neighborhood, and every day about noon, when he came out of his house, he would see a little boy on the lit side of the neighborhood with a big old mirror, and the sun was hitting that mirror, and he was shining the light on the other side, and, and he was like, Boy, why every day when I come out of my house, you got that big mirror and, and shining that light? He said, well, my mother and father live on the dark side of the road, and I just want a little light to shine on their side of the road. And that's all I'm trying to tell your family, is that when you leave out of the four walls of this church, you are going out to be a mirror that wherever you go, folk can shine a little light in the dark places of this world. I don't know about you, but our communities need a little light to shine in those places. Do you receive the word this morning? This light, as we all stand, this light does not come from 
the S-U-N. This life comes from the S-O-N. This life comes from Jesus Christ. 